What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where you will be learning 6 must know topics before you start learning react. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon where you get benefits such as a private discord group where you can share your coding issues where other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. When creating web applications in react, you will be using a lot of javascript since it's obviously built in it. If you aren't 100% familiar to JavaScript syntax yet, don't worry because we're going to cover some important topics right here. Now what I will do is creating a new folder inside the source folder called must-no and I'll just create new files in here per topic. Now the first must-no are the data types, so let's say data-types.js and we're going to work in here. Let me zoom in actually. Alright, let's get it going. The first must known are the six primitive data types and two special data types in JavaScript. Let's go over them quickly to fresh up your memory. I'm not going to test them inside the output, but I'll be defining them where you can follow along. The first one is the most obvious one, which is the string data type. The string is a collection of alphanumeric characters in a block or single or double quotes. So let's say let, let's create a new variable called name and let's set it equal to double quotes. Inside the double quotes, let's just say we have a name of Dari. And right there, we created a new variable called name with a value of Dari. This can be single quotes as well. It really doesn't matter. The second one are the numbers. These can be an integer, so a full number, or floats, which will be a decimal number. So let's start off with a new let called age, which is equal to 25. Right now, we're working with the integer because it's a full number. The second one is the float, so let price is 20.5, so we're working with a decimal number right here. The third one will be the boolean, which can have two values, either true or false. So let's say let is sleeping, can be true, which is at the moment, and we have a let is awake, which is false. So right now is sleeping is true, and is awake is equal to false. The next three data types are types of objects, and the first one will be an array. Now what we can do is to create a new variable, so let, let's say cars, is equal, and whenever you want to define an array, you need to set it equal to a set of brackets. Inside the brackets, you need to define index values. So if we go right inside of our brackets and hit enter, we can define a new value in single quotes, when you're working with a string, of BMW. You can add different data types right here as well, so we can say 25, which does not make sense, comma, and we can go continue on with a new string. Right now, behind the scenes, JavaScript knows that BMW is an index of 0, 25 is an index of 1, and Mercedes is an index of 3. There's also another syntax of an array, and that's using the array function, but I won't be showing it since we're not going to use it in this course, and this method is way simpler. We can also define objects, and objects are actually something that you will be using quite a lot in React. An object is basically a complex data type that allows you to store collections of data. So let's say comment object, and what we can do is to say let person, is equal, and whenever you want to define an object, you have to add a set of curly braces. Let's hit enter, and we can basically define indexes here in single quotes. So let's say name, or basically keys, has a value of code with Dari. Now you can add multiple right there, but you need to add a comma at the end of your value. So let's say that we're following a new course called React.js. And let's say another one, what's the channel? It's called CDW. Now let's actually console log our person to see what's going on right here. Save it. Let's run it. And right here, it looks like a JSON, but it is an object with the name of code with Dari. Course is React.js and the channel is CDW. Now the last one is a function, and this is something we will also be using quite a lot. So let's create one. So let's add a comment function. Now, whenever you want to define a function, you have to start off with the function keyword, followed with the function name. Now, if I could give you a tip, always use camel case right here. So let's say create 
message. Now in here, let's just return a string of this is a message. Now inside the console.log, let's replace person with the create message function that we created. Save it. Let's run it. Scroll down. And this is a message has been printed out. Now next to the function, there are actually two special data types that you can have, which is undefined. And the second one is null. With the undefined data type, you're going to set the variable, but you're not going to do anything with it. And it's pretty simple. Let's just write down a let and we have a new city. If we console log our city right now, whoops, you'll see that undefined has been printed out, but what you can do is to define it later on. So we can say city is equal to Bangkok. Save it, run it again. And undefined has been replaced with Bangkok. Then there is null, which is, let's say, let hello is equal to null, which basically has no value. So let's add it into console log, run it, and the value is null, so nothing. Let's focus on the second topic right now, which will be variables.js. In JavaScript, you can declare a variable in three different ways. The first method is by defining a constant, but keep in mind that once you declare your constant, the value can't be changed. Now let's say that you want to use a value throughout your entire application. Well, that's when you use a constant. So let's say const name is equal to code with diary. If we console.log it, so name, run it, you'll see that code with diary has been printed out. If we try to set the constant of name to another value, so let's say name is equal to code with Michael, save it, run the code. You see that we're getting an error right now because we have a type error right there and the assignment to constant variable can't happen because we have already defined constant name. So let's remove it. Let me actually add a comment here, which says constants. Oops, that's a typo. There's no need to add capitals. All right. The second method is actually the one that we used before, which is using the keyword let. Let allows you to declare variables that are limited to the scope of a block. Let's create a new function here. Let's say function let example. Inside our function, we want to define a new variable of let's say let age is equal to 28. If we then define a statement of curly braces, and let's redefine inside our statement, let h equal to, let's say, 14. If we then console.log our variable h inside the statement, you should be seeing h is 14, right? But let's also add it outside of the statement. Let's say console.log h. Pause the video and think about it. Will 28 be printed out or will 14 be printed out? Let's test it out. Let's remove our console log and let's call the function. So let example, save it. Let's run it, scroll down. And the output is 14 and then 28. So it's not overriding age 14 outside of the statement, only inside. Unlike Gillette, you can declare a var, which is actually the old way of declaring variables. With the keyword var, you'll be defining a variable globally so what we can do is to change the function name to varlet, and let's actually copy paste it where we're calling it. And instead of saying let h, let's change it to var, both places. If we run it, you'll see that 14 will be printed out twice. That's happening because we're setting our var h equal to 14, which will overwrite age of 28. So the console log that is following which will be 14 and the second one as well. Let's focus on the next topic. Let's create a new file right here. Let's call it es6classes.js. Now, like the name implies, the next must know are classes in JavaScript. You can see a class as a template for an object. It's pretty simple to create a class. The only thing you need to do is to write the keyword class, space, followed with the class name. Usually, it's pretty good to keep it equal to the file name. 
Now we're currently not using the right name. So what we can do is to create a different name. It doesn't matter. Keep in mind that classes always start with a capital. So let's say capital T of test. Within classes, you can define something which is called a constructor. And a constructor is unique in a class and only in a class. So you can only create one constructor. And whatever happens inside of the constructor will be basically called whenever the class is being called. Now, let's define a constructor right now. It's pretty simple. You just need to write down the keyword constructor. Follow the set of parentheses since we're working with a method. And whenever you work with a method, you also need to add curly braces. Lines right here, which is saying that it's a useless constructor. Nothing is being done right here. So let's pass in something inside the constructor. Let's say num1, num2. Inside the class, so let's say this point num1 is equal to num1. This dot num2 is equal to num2. Now outside of a constructor, let's create a function where we do something with num1 and num2. So let's say print. And we're basically going to add a console.log right here of this dot num1 plus this dot num2. Now, usually when you work with classes, you will be calling it in a different file. But for the, but for the sake of this video, let's create a new instance of it right outside of our current class. In order to create a new instance, we need to define a new variable name. So let's say const test is equal to the keyword new space to the class name, which is in our case, test. Now keep in mind that you need to add a set of parentheses because you're calling a class. Now we said that we have num1 and num2 inside our constructor. So we do need to pass it inside the test class that we have right here. So let's say five comma six. So num1 will be five and num2 will be six. Now right below our constant test, let's create a new console.log. And what we can do is to write down the instance name, so test, but it also gives us the power to access functions inside the class. So if we add a dot right here, you can see that we can call the print method that we have inside the test instance. And right here, we're saying, well, call the test instance, but focus on the print function. Save it, let's run it, scroll down. And as you can see, the output is 11. Classes are something you will see a lot and not only in JavaScript. The main advantage is the fact that you can create as many instances as you want. So what we can do is to duplicate our constant test. And right now it doesn't work because we have two constants, but what we can do is changing the instance name to test2. We obviously need a console lock, so let's duplicate that as well. We're going to call the test2.print function. Save it, run the code. And as you can see, 11 has been printed out twice right now. Classes are simple once you understand it, but we will be diving deeper into it later on. All right, let's create a new file. Let's call it arrow-function.js. Now the arrow function is very useful because you will be using it a lot. It's a very clean, concise syntax and it's way more intuitive. Let's compare the regular function and the arrow function together. Let's start off with the regular function. Let's say let x is equal to function, parentheses, curly braces. Let's pass in num1 and num2 as parameters. Then inside the function, let's just return num1 plus num2. This is all right, right? Nothing is wrong with it. But it's three lines of code, and this can be done way easier. Let's define a new variable right below of it called let y. Then we're going to set it equal not to the keyword function because we're going to skip that. We're going straight into the parentheses. Then inside the parentheses, we're obviously going to pass in num1 comma num2. Instead of adding the curly braces right after it, you can use the arrow function by saying equal greater than. And what we can do right here is basically what you're doing inside the function above. So let's say num1 plus num2. You see how much easier this is? It's super easy to write and you got everything in one line. Let's add two console logs. So let's say console.log x parentheses and let's say five comma five. And let's add another console.log of y 
5 comma 5. Let's run our code. Scroll down and you'll see that 10 has been printed out twice. So it works in the same exact way. It's just a lot easier to write. Let's focus on the next one. Let's create a new file. Let's say destructuring.js. Tip number five will be destructuring assignments. Destructuring assignments allow you to unpack values from arrays or properties into distinct variables. Let's start off by creating a new variable called frameworks. So let frameworks is equal to an object. So curly braces. Then inside the curly braces, we're going to define basically a key and a value pair. So this framework object has four keys. Let's say PHP has a value of Laravel. We have JS, which has a value of React. We have Java, which has a framework of Maven. And the last one is Python, which has a framework of Django. Now, let's say that you only want to grab the value PHP, or maybe Python, or maybe you need both of them. Do you want to loop over it, or do you want to use destructuring assignments, which is way easier? What we can do is to go right below of it, define a new var at curly braces. You basically need to define the index that you want to pull out of your object. Let's say PHP, comma, Python. We're going to create two new local variables from them called PHP and Python, but we need to tell it from where. So let's say is equal to frameworks. In order to print this out, we only need to add a console.log and you can basically refer to the two local variables we created, PHP or Python. Let's say PHP. Save it. Let's run it. And as you can see, Laravel has been printed out and we have destructured our framework object. The last must know will be CommonJS, which is a module pattern that is supported by all versions of Node.js. What it will do is exporting all JavaScript objects using the module's exports. So let's remove the console log and the var that we have. And in order to export it, we need to call the module dot exports is equal to something. Whenever you want to export something, you need to wrap it around curly braces and then tell it what you want to export. In our case, we have an object right here. So let's say frameworks. Let's save it and let's run the code. Scroll down, nothing has happened. Well, something has happened, but it's not showing us anything, which is all right. Right now, we should be able to use our let frameworks inside another JavaScript file. So let's create a new file. Let's say test.js. In here, we need to define a new constant. So let's say const curly braces followed with the module export that we want to pull in, which will be frameworks. Then we need to tell it where we want to pull it in from. In our case, we could basically set it equal to the require function, which accepts a path. So let's add single quotes, let's add a dot, and we want to go to the destructuring file that we have. Now let's console log it. So console.log frameworks, save it, run the code, Scroll down and we're getting an error right now and it can't find the module. And I made a typo right here. Excuse me, it's dot forward slash. Save it, refresh it or run it again. And as you can see, our frameworks object has been used inside a different file where we have defined it because we have, let's go back, exported frameworks. This was it for this video where we went over data types, variables, classes, the arrow function, destructuring assignments, and common JS and JavaScript. There are way more topics in JavaScript that you do need to know before you move into React, but I personally think that these will give you a kickstart if you aren't familiar with JavaScript. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.